Hello and welcome to Data-Driven Web Apps in Flask. In this course, we're going to take the Flask Web Framework, which is a Python-based web framework, and we're going to build some amazing data-driven web applications with it. We're going to use Bootstrap, which is one of the most popular CSS front-end design frameworks to make the web app that we build in Python look great. Of course, almost all web applications access a database. At least the dynamic ones do. And we're going to use the most popular and powerful Python-based ORM called SQL Alchemy to write Python classes and map those to our database. So welcome, welcome, welcome to Data-Driven Web Apps in Flask. We're going to have a great time building some real-world applications and learning some real-world ways to put those into production. Before we get into all the details of Flask, let's talk just a little bit about the overall web application that we're going to build. Some courses might build a bunch of little sites, but what we're going to do is going to build a proper, large, comprehensive application in Flask. And I think the one that we have picked out here is going to be so much fun. It really matches a lot of the web apps that you might need or want to build. So let's go dig into that and see what it is that we're going to build. I'll take you a quick tour. Now, if you've worked with Python for any time, this is a, probably a familiar site to you. You've seen something like this, right? This is where you can go and find all the amazing packages in Python. You want to work with Flask? You get Flask from the Python package index. And down here you can see there's some popular ones like gevent or boto3 or the AWS command line interface. We can open this up and we have all sorts of details, right? So what we want to do is build an application a lot like this, right? Here we've got our project history, we've got the license, we've got the various maintainers if there are any, homepage, all the description, and so on. However, Let's zoom back just a little bit. Yes, do you see the URL up here? In fact, this is the application we're going to build. We're going to build a replica of pypi.org. Right? Let's pull this up here. There we go. Maybe the zoom is not quite the same, but it's generally, uh, generally the same here. If you go and pull up one of these down here, like this one, you can see, again, one is zoomed a little more than the other. But other than that, these are real similar. So what we're going to do is we're going to create PyPI, the website. Now, of course, this is going to be not all the infrastructure, just the main website that shows you things like this, allows you to log in and register, you know, find the various packages and list the popular ones here and things like that. It's got all the elements of most major web applications. It's not super complicated, but it's not a toy app either. I'm really excited to build this with you, and I think it's going to be so much fun. And I think you'll get a lot out of it to have this as a working example at the end of this course. In this course, we're going to build what is called a full stack web app, or at least sometimes it's referred to as that. So what is this full stack idea anyway? Let's talk real quickly about it. So we have a browser, we have the internet, we have our server, and our server is going to talk to a database. And this browser, it wants to talk to our web app. So magically, a request comes in and finds its way through the internet to our server. And our server is going to do some work, maybe ask some questions to the database, and send a response back. What technologies do we need to know to make this happen? Well, over on the server side, we're going to use Python to run our Flask application. We're going to write our code in Python, things like that. We're also going to write dynamic HTML templates in a Python extended version of HTML, basically, in something called Jinja, Jinja 2 specifically. So we need to know this Jinja language. We need to know the Flask web framework. We've got to talk to a database. We could do that directly through the DB API and raw SQL or in the raw MongoDB query language, but that's really not the most efficient way to do it. So we're going to use SQL Alchemy to map classes over. So we're going to learn SQL Alchemy. We want to deploy our code somewhere on the internet. That's the red thing right here in the picture, after all. So we're going to put that onto Linux, onto Ubuntu. And there, we need to have something that's going to run our Python code, our Flask application and do all the web stuff like HTTP2, static files, SSL, and so on. So the latter part is Nginx. The part that runs our code is micro WSGI. So we've got to have all these things in play in the server. And then when we talk to the database, the database will probably be Postgres or MongoDB. And of course, it has its own query language like SQL or the MongoDB query language. We're not really going to focus too much on that because we're going to use this class-based ORM style with SQL Alchemy. But in practice, you would need to know that. You'd also need to be able to migrate this database and evolve its schema as your application changes over time. So you need to know about database migrations and production and backups and things like that. So that's all on the server side. But we're not quite done. We have a little more over here in the browser. 
we're going to send back HTML, and we need to know HTML and CSS to make this look good. Probably some front-end framework, or we're going to be doing a ton of work ourselves, so maybe Bootstrap or Semantic UI or something like that. Possibly, at least sometimes in these full-stack web apps, we're doing a lot of JavaScript, maybe a front-end JavaScript framework like Vue.js. The gray-out stuff, we're not really going to cover too much, so we're not going to really worry about that. And you'll see you can build really interesting applications without most of those, at least without very much JavaScript or the front-end frameworks. Although, often when people do talk about full-stack, that's kind of included in there. There's a ton of stuff we're going to learn here. This can be pretty daunting in the beginning. You're like, oh my gosh, all these things. Not only do I have to get better at Python, I also have to get better at CSS and databases and Linux. I didn't even think I'd have to learn Linux for all this, right? But don't worry. By the time you get to the end of this course, you're going to have a really nice, concise, and tight example putting all this stuff together. We're going to talk about each one of them separately. And you're going to have a great app, a great full-stack web app at the end of this course. Let's quickly lay out the topics that we're going to cover and add just a little bit of background to each one of them. So after this chapter, we're going to quickly talk about how to set up your machine, make sure you have the right version of Python, the right editor, and also all the starter source code or data that you might need to get going. Then we're going to talk about the Flask web framework itself, compare it to some of the other frameworks like Django, Pyramid, Bottle, and so on. Where does it fit in that world? And what are some of the core elements or building blocks of it? We're going to go and create our first Flask site. Now, we're going to build a pretty involved and very cool app as we go through this course. But let's not start there. Let's just create the Hello World equivalent of a Flask site and see what all the moving parts are, and then build out something more interesting. We're going to focus on some of the techniques and language features of Jinja templates. The idea with Flask is we're going to go maybe to a database or a service or something like that, pull back some data, and we want to render that to HTML. But you don't do that all in Python. Most of the HTML is fixed. You maybe just want to take a list and repeat little elements of it as HTML fragments or conditionally show or hide things like if you're logged in or not logged in. So we're going to talk about the Jinja template language and how that fits into Flask. One of the first things that happens in these MVC, Model View Controller frameworks like Flask, is that a URL request will come in, both the verb and the URL is going to come in, and it's up to this thing called routing to figure out what function is going to handle that request, what Python function. So we're going to figure out how to use routing to map URLs to our view methods. Flask doesn't do anything for making our site look good. It just delivers whatever HTML we write. So we don't want to have to write all of it. We're going to talk about some of the cool front-end frameworks, Bootstrap, as well as a couple of others that we could use to make our site look better. And we will use some Bootstrap to make our site look good. Almost all the interesting web applications talk to some kind of data backend. And we're going to talk to a relational database. So we're going to focus on using SQL Alchemy and its ORM to map Python classes to the database. So we're going to see how to define those classes, how to set up the connections, and really do all the queries and inserts and updates, everything you need to do to work with SQL Alchemy. SQL Alchemy is great for creating the initial database structure. I have a packages class, and I talk to SQL Alchemy, and it will create a packages table in the database. But it will not migrate it. It will not change it over time. And if those things become out of sync, your database class and your database schema the app will crash and freak out and say, whoa, 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 I can't work with this. This database is incompatible with my understanding of what it should be. So in order to evolve our database, our database schema, as things grow and change in our application, we need to use something called migrations. So we're going to use something called Alembic, which is paired with SQL Alchemy, to very nicely and in many ways automatically evolve our database schema to stay in line with our application code. Web apps that show data, well, they're fun, but it's way better if you can accept user input, let people search, let them interact with things, and so on, create accounts, register, whatnot. So we're going to talk about HTML forms and how we let users submit data back to our Flask application. We're also going to see that the internet is a dangerous place. People will send us invalid data, either by mistake or maliciously. So we're going to look at a design pattern called view models that abstract away or isolate away 
of validation for all that data coming into the server, as well as the data exchange with the template. It's going to be really, really nice. And on the client side, we're going to look at some HTML5 features that will, with almost no effort, provide really great validation for at least the browsers. We want to make sure that our web app is working and stays working. So we're going to write some unit tests. We're going to use PyTest and some special infrastructure that is baked right into Flask to help us write testable code. You'll see that testing web applications can be tricky. We already talked about it interacting with the database, but it also does things like interact with the Flask web framework itself. It expects a request to come in properly structured and initialized and so on. So we're going to talk about how we can either fake out some of those things or use the special testing infrastructure from Flask to make sure that we can write our tests in isolation the way they're meant to work. Once we get our app all working, we want to put it online. So we're going to deploy this to a Linux cloud virtual machine using Nginx, MicroWSGI, and Ubuntu. You'll see there's not a whole lot to it, and it's a really great platform to run our web app on. And finally, we're going to talk about converting our web app to MongoDB. As we talked about before, this is interesting because MongoDB is a great choice for a database backend, and it has some really great similarities to SQL Alchemy, so we'll be quite similar. But it also will show you the true power of some of our various design patterns that we're going to implement, something we're going to call services, our view models, and things like that. And we're going to be able to completely swap out the entire database style, not just implementation, but even relational versus NoSQL or non-relational databases with just changing a couple of files. So it's going to be really great. It's going to be a great sort of way to round us out and appreciate what we built also show you how flexible our data access layer will have become by this point. Well, that's it. This is what we're going to cover. I think this is a great set of topics. Once you go through all this, you're going to know pretty much everything that you need to know to write real, true production, data-driven web apps. It's going to be a lot of fun. I hope you're excited. I'm definitely excited to get started on these with you.